the Abbott and Costello program. Listen to the rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes, and that brave youth who bore through snow and ice a banner with this strange device. Costello, Whoa. Costello, what in the world have you got there? Oh, uh-huh. what do you think it is? It's a horse, isn't it? Certainly it's a horse. What does it look like? A hip on pop of the hot mom in a bus? No. <laughs> Costello, tell me the truth now. Where did you get that horse? Oh, Abbott, I bought it for a dollar and a half from a fellow that was wearing a white suit. And another thing, this horse is a hero. What do you mean? He won the Distinguished Service Cross. Look, it says right on his blanket, DSC. Distinguished <laughs> Service Cross? Yeah, he won it. That means Department of Street Cleaning. <laughs> You mean that fellow in the white suit was a street cleaner? Certainly. No wonder when I first spoke to him, he gave me the brush. Well, <laughs> Costello, you've got to cut out this nonsense. Now, last week you bought a dog, this week you bought a horse. Now, the next thing you know, you'll buy an elf. I did buy an elephant. Huh? I bought an elephant, Abbott. What do you, what do you mean? I had to give him back. Why? They wouldn't let me bring him home on a streetcar. Oh, <laughs> Costello, take that horse out of here right now and give him back to the man. Go ahead. No, Abbott. Come on. Please don't. Yes. Don't make me give him back. Abbott, I love animals. I want to keep him. Don't make me give Peanut Butter back. He's the sweetest, nicest horse I ever met. Come here, Peanut Butter. That's a nice girl. That's a pretty girl. Peanut Butter, give Abbott a great big kiss. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> sure cools you off, don't it? Castell, take that horse outside right now and turn him loose. Wait a minute, Abbott. No, I, I can't do that. Peanut butter is hungry, and I gotta feed him. Hey, what do you? What does a horse eat? A horse. A horse eats his fodder. He eats his fodder. Certainly. Well, that's fine. And what does a horse's fodder eat? He eats his fodder. Well, what do you know? And what does a horse's mother eat? She eats her fodder. What are they? Cannibals? (laughs) Certainly not. Every horse has to eat his fodder. Oh, I see. He eats his father, yes. and then his father eats his father, That's it. and then his mother eats her father, and the next thing you know, there won't be no fathers left for Father's Day. <laughs> no, 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 no. You dummy, to feed a horse, you take a bag and put his father in it. Does he stand for it? Certainly. <laughs> you mean you put his father in a bag? That's right. And you hang his father on his nose. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? Oh, <laughs> walking around with his fodder hanging on his nose. Oh. Will you talk sense, Costello? Now, if you intend to keep that horse around here, you'll have to take care of him yourself. You're going to be the horse's groom. I'm going to be the horse's what? His groom. You said you loved the horse, didn't you? Yeah, but I don't have to marry him. Oh. <laughs> Look, Costello, when I say groom, I mean you have to curry the horse. I have to what? Curry, curry. Curry the horse? Yeah, that's right. He's big enough to walk himself. <laughs> Abbott, I'm going to take peanut butter out to Hollywood Park, and I'm going to enter him in the race. Uh, the track is pretty muddy. Do you think he'll be able to race? What, is he a mutter? A what? I said, is he a mutter? How can he be a mutter? <laughs> Ain't a she always a mutter? Well, certainly not. Sometimes a he makes a better mutter than a she. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Look, Abbott, suppose a mama horse has little horses. Don't that make her a mutter? Well, that depends on her feet. You learn something new every day, don't you? You know, Costello, a mother is a horse that likes to run in mud on account of having sore feet. Well, in that case, I guess peanut butter is a mother because I saw him limping on his two front feet. Oh, I see. He's having trouble with his forelegs. Why, certainly. Because when... What'd you say? I said he's having trouble with his forelegs. I just got through telling you he was only limping with his two front legs. Costello, your horse's forelegs are in front. His forelegs are in front? Yes. What are those things in the back? What you... you don't understand. Your horse has four legs in front and hind legs in back. Four legs in the front and hind legs in back? That's right. What I got, a centipede? <laughs> Look, Costello, your horse only has four legs. I know, I know. Well... But he only races on three of them. What does he do with the other leg? He trips the other horse. <laughs> Costello. He, he's a dirty horse. I can imagine that. He, he, he cheats. Yes, I can see that. But look, Costello, that broken down horse doesn't belong on a racetrack. 
Who'd ever bet, bet on a nag like that? Look at him. I would. You would. I'm going to take all my money out, to the, out of my piggy bank. I'm even going to sell my erector set and my ping pong paddles. <laughs> You're going to sell all that for what? And my miggles and marbles. And I'm going to bet every cent of my money on my horse. No, that's ridiculous, Costello. Putting all your money on a horse. Big gamblers don't do that. Oh, no? Well, no. the biggest gambler that ever lived did it. And just who was the biggest gambler that ever lived? Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva was a gambler? Yep. She put everything she had on a horse. I oh. <laughs> Freddie Rich now in a special treatment of a swell samba hit from Latin America, Tico Tico. horse learned that dance step. Oh, he's a horseless at the Hollywood canteen. <laughs> Look, uh, Lou, not horses. You mean hostess. Look, oh, all right, Costello, come on. Here we are at the Hollywood racetrack. Now, we've got to see one of the officials and register your horse. Why register him now? The election's over. No, no. <laughs> he, he don't want to vote anyway. Ah, dummy. In order to enter your horse in the race, you've got to show his pedigree. For instance, who was your horse pulled by? I beg your pardon? Who was your horse fooled by? He wasn't fooled by anybody. <laughs> He's a very smart horse, Papa. No, 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 Costello. My horse is no dummy. No, 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 you don't understand. You've got to tell them all about your horse, his age, his weight, and your horse's height. Do you know, do you know your horse's height? Oh, sure, I know him very good. He's a very good friend of mine. Who's a friend of yours? Horse's height, the band leader. Oh. <laughs> I know him very good because I run around with his brother because I'm tight. <laughs> well, cut, cut out the nonsense. Come on, let's see if we can find a jockey to ride your horse. The jockey, I'm a dandy. Well, it's our old friend, Tisco. Tisco. Oh, my, hello, Mr. Rabbit, and you too, Mr. Cosmello. Ho, ho. <laughs> my goodness, I haven't seen you in a long distance. I understand, I understand that you're looking for a jockey. Uh, uh, now, just a minute, Kitzel. Yes. Are you trying to tell us that you know how to ride a horse? Do I know how to ride a horse? <laughs> I'm laughing. I see that. <laughs> Why, for you information, I just got finished riding a horse across the whole country, from New York to Hollywood. <laughs> Hoo-hoo, I rode for days and days until the seat of my trousers were worn thin, and here I am. You finally came through. <laughs> Just a minute, that's me. That's my line, yes. Yeah, please, just a minute. Uh, Costello. 
Uh, Kids, so Costello has just bought a hawk, and he's looking for a good jockey. Well, well, look no further, because I'm just the man you're looking at. You know I lost only one race this year, and, and, and that was because my horse was scratched in the handicap. Well, that's a very tender spot. Oh, yes. <laughs> No, 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 Costello. The handicap is like a derby. Kitzel, did you ever ride in a derby? No, I always wear a stocking cap. <laughs> Look, Kitzel, you ain't gonna ride my peanut butter. What? I'm gonna get my kid brother Sebastian to ride him. Well, you're making a big mistake because I'll have you to know I won the Dixie handicap riding on that famous horse, Ocean Cracker. Ocean Cracker? Yes. I never heard of him. He's the father of Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, I can see that you know very little about horses. Oh, yeah? Well, let me tell you something, Kitzel. I hang out with all the famous cowboys. Last night, I shot craps with Pink Rider. Pink Rider? Pink Rider. Costello. I thought it was Red Rider. It was, but I faded him. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, I can see that you doubt my ability as an equestionaire. Yes, I can see it. <laughs> But I'm going to give you a sample of my fancy riding on my own horse. You see, that's him over there with the wooden saddle. You, you ride a horse with a wooden saddle? Oh, certainly. I like a wooden saddle. Watch me jump into it. Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Costello, look. Here comes your little brother, Sebastian. Ah! Hello. Uh, I'm all ready to ride peanut butter in the big race. I brought along a special saddle. Uh, do you call that a saddle? Yeah. That looks like one of your mother's old girdles. It is. And if I see the horse is going to lose, I can let him out in the stretch. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Costello, you go over and register your horse while I uh, teach Sebastian how to ride. You ain't going to teach me nothing. Sebastian, you listen to your Uncle Bud. I won't. You will. I will. You will. I won't. I'm going crazy. You will. I won't. Well, that was a photo finish. Oh, go on, Costello. Take care. I'll take care of Sebastian. You go ahead. Okay, now, see you now. later. All right, go ahead. Now, Sebastian, we're going to give the horse a workout. All right? Now, hold still, peanut butter. That <whistles> boy. Now, Sebastian, put that harness over his head. That's it now. Now, uh, give him a bit in the mouth. Give him a what? Give him a bit in the mouth. Give him a bit in the mouth? Yes. What kind of English is that? You mean give him a bite in the mouth. Never mind that. Now, now you've got the bridle on. Uh, what happens to the reins? They go away when the sun comes out. No, no, I mean the reins on the horse. Oh, let it rain on the horse. What do you want me to do? Hold an umbrella over him? Uh, uh, Sebastian, why must you always be a smart aleck? I don't know. Ah, uh, your brother is depending on this horse race. He's depending on this horse to win it. And what are you doing? What are you doing? You stand here and ridicule this poor old horse. A horse that probably has a large family. He wants to win this race and go back to his green pastures, don't you think? And you won't help him. What's the matter with you? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Uncle Bud, I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I guess I possess a cruel streak. I got a warped nature. I have no consideration for dumb animals. I should run the race and let the poor old horse sit in the saddle. I'll say you should. But why do you continually persist in doing these things? Oh, I'm a bad boy! will start in 15 minutes, and we hope you'll have a wonderful day here at the cleaners. Or I mean at the uh, racetrack. <laughs> and above all, ladies and gentlemen, beware of pickpockets. Don't let them get your money. Save it for us. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. We're in trouble. What do you mean? I just came from the stable. They, they don't want to let my horse run. They said he wasn't in condition. Who told you that? The track vegetarian. And, and not vegetarian, you dope. That's <laughs> veterinarian. Veterinarian? Yes. That's what my grandfather is. Your father is a horse doctor? No, my grandfather. He's a veterinarian. A veterinarian in the Spanish-American War. Oh, talk Spanish. <laughs> what did the doctor say was wrong with your horse? He said he was bugs. He said he had the crickets. He didn't say crickets. Your horse has rickets. Rickets? 
That's what my father drinks every night. Your father drinks rickets? Yes, yeah, slow gin rickets. Oh. <laughs> Pat Ellis, quiet. Here comes the doctor now. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I am Dr. Nazaro, the racetrack veterinarian. Well, I'm glad to meet you, doctor. Is it true that Costello's horse can't run this afternoon? Well, I suppose he could run if he had the proper medical treatment. I'll tell you what you do, Costello. Run over to the drugstore and get a tumor saturase, a little capiris, and a water for Sailor Mike to take the seat of reward. <laughs> then you buy a hypodermic needle and shoot the medicine in the left quarter right above the crease. Between the capris, you bring all the frost. Don't buy any casserole because that will be the seed. Then you push in the shoulder horses right and put it right below the twan. I beg your pardon? I said you put it right below the twan. <laughs> I should never do that for my horse. You've got it, Costello. Now take your pencil and write this down. Okay. Dear Druggins. Yes. Yeah. Please give Costello one tube of satyrase with a little drops of course and one bottle of caffeine sip of hit, Mr. Ray, and a jar of passive salt free Costello being hopeless remittance. Now, have you got that written down? I got it over one part. What? <laughs> what part did you miss? The part that comes after Dear Druggist. <laughs> That's because you're not paying any attention, Costello. Yes, I simply told you to get a little bit of a sap and raw device that you can rub on the case. I could tell you to get some happy face of the hidden secrets, but why should I pay this all to me? Do we be some of And I know what I'm talking about. You and nobody else! Costello, how dare you insult the doctor? I can't understand you. You can't understand me! Listen to him! This is the most outrageous thing I've heard in all my life. I'm a graduate of the veterinarian college at Francis Straw. You know where Mefford is? Well, at seven miles, turn to the rake, go to the past, there's a great big celebrate, and you walk it up and say, I took medicine for eight years. Yeah, but you forgot to take the spoon out of your mouth. Costello, please. Don't give me any of that. Uh, 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 cut that out or the doctor won't treat your horse. That's right, young man. Do you realize that your horse is suffering from a very severe case of twiddle salt and flint lives? <laughs> well, that's it. It could be worse. You might have savories of the morphine prints and doubt report with the hip of You know that that, that in, in, see, when he's in that condition, why well, he's liable to walk out the track and pull the steering wheel. He wasn't there. Costello, you can't anything but for the bunch of hair. All right, never mind. Look, never mind, horse. Costello, doctor. Go ahead and get the horse ready for the race, please. Very well. Where shall I send the bill? Now it's my turn. Bring your bill to room 509 in the Baldi Pong, Jupiter Fort building at the corner of Dick and Show. It's right near Sergeant Big Shakespeare Street. Okay, I'll be there. Where? You said it. <laughs> what did I say? I mean, hey, Abbott, was that guy real or am I dreaming? I mean, I know it seems silly, but I'm pinching myself. Young man, you're pinching me. I'm not so silly after all. <laughs> Attention, everybody. The horses are at the post for the first race. Come on, Costello. Your horse doesn't run till the last race. Let, let's make a few bets on the other race races. Racing forms. Get your racing forms. How about a racing form, young man? A what? I have the racing form. Well, keep your coat buttoned and nobody will notice it. <laughs> Costello, this woman is a bookie. She's a bookie? Yes. Oh, Evan. What? Let's get out of here before her husband comes. I'm afraid of him. You're afraid of her husband? Yeah, everybody's afraid of the bookie man. No. Oh, funny. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Let's, let's make a bet. Yes, how about placing a bet with me? What race are you running in? <laughs> uh, I'd have won the last race of my... Oh, what do you mean? Uh, young man, would you like to buy one of my special dope sheets? Now, in this dope sheet, there's one horse that pays 200 to 1. Yes. There's another horse that pays 500 to 1. Yes. And my big dope sheet, Fesso, yes. pays 1,000 to 1. Yes. And do you know what I think? I think you better quit, eat, quit eating the dope off the whole sheet. <laughs> right, look, come here. Costello. Look, the first race is about to start. I'll take your bet. Lou. You're going to take my bet? I'll take your bet. Okay, Evan, I'll bet $2. Here's oh. the money. They're off. The race is over. You lose. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What kind of a bet was that? They're off. The race is over. You lose. What kind of a race was what's, that? What's wrong? A one step? Come on. Run that race over again. I want to see it. Pipe down. Pipe down. Now, now in the next race, I, I want you to double up. Double up? I ain't even straightened up from the last one. <laughs> I mean, I want you to bet four dollars. You want me to bet four dollars? Yeah. Four dollars, my eye. My eye. That's a good horse. It's a bet. They're off. The race is over. You lose. Will you wait a minute? Stop squawking. 
Accidents will happen. Maybe the horse got dust in his eye. You don't know. You know what dust is. Yeah, dust is mud with the juice squeezed out. Yeah, right. <laughs> now in the next race... There ain't gonna be no next race. But listen, there's only two horses in the next race. Jelly Bean and Lollipop. You bet on each horse and you can't lose. Well, maybe that's right. Certainly it's right. Jelly Bean and Lollipop. Two horses. I'm a sucker anyway. Yeah. yeah. Two horses. Yeah. I bet on each horse. That's right. I can't lose. How can you lose? Okay, here's $20 on Jelly Bean. Yeah. And here's $20 on Lollipop. Good. Good. The horses are at the post. Right. They're off. Look, Lollipop first. Jelly Bean second. Come on, Jelly Pop. You, no, you, you mean Lollipop. I mean Jelly Pop. I'm betting on that daughter. Uh, wait a minute. They're rounding the turn. Lollipop first, Jelly Bean second. Come on. Somebody! They're in the stretch. Lollipop first, Jelly Bean second. They're under the wire. And the winner, Hershey Bar. <laughs> Hershey Bar. Now, wait that the nuts. Now, just a minute. In the last race... That was my last race. But wait a minute, Costello. There's only one horse in this last race. Oh, one horse in the race. Certainly. Yeah. You uh, sound like one of them racetrack trouts. No, no, no. Trout, trout. All yeah. right. But I wouldn't make it out of bed if there was no horses in the race. But, Costello, it's your own horse, peanut butter. Peanut butter? Yeah, one horse. Hey, yeah, but you mean my own little yes. horse, peanut yes, butter? Yes, yes, yes. That's different. Come on. Put $10 on the nose. $10 on the nose. $10 on the tail. $10 on the tail. Here's another $10. Put it under the saddle. What for? In case he comes in sideways. <laughs> Look, you can't lose. It's a one horse race. One horse race. Look, they're off in a bunch. Wait a minute! How can one horse be off in a bunch? Hey, wait a minute. At the half, it's peanut butter. Come on, peanut butter! At the three quarters, peanut butter. Come on, peanut butter! Red peanut butter! Red! Red out, peanut butter! In the stretch, and the winner, peanut butter. Oh, hooray! I win! I heard a peanut butter win! Give me my money! Just a minute, folks. It's a photo finish. Photo finish! <laughs> one horse in a race! How can it be a photo finish? Lollipop just came in from the last race. He must be one of Bing Crosby's horses. Look, Abbott, look over there. No wonder I lost. What's the matter? Here comes my little butter, Sebastian, riding on peanut butter. What's the matter with that kid? Look at the way he's riding. He's riding underneath the horse. Sebastian, you should have won that race. What was the idea of riding underneath the horse instead of on top of him? Dr. Nazara told you to ride under the horse? Yeah. He said the horse was sick, and he told me to watch his stomach. Oh, please. Let's all take a ride with Connie Haynes on a trolley car. With my high starch collar and my high top shoes and my hair piled high up on my head, I went to lose a jolly hour from the trolley and lost my heart instead. With his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. the trolley, ding, 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 went the bell, zing, 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 went my heart string, for the moment I saw him I fell. Chug, 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 went the motor, bump, 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 went the brake. his hat and took a seat. He said he hoped he hadn't stepped upon my feet. He asked my name, I held my dress. I couldn't speak because he scared me half to death. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Flop, flop, flop went the wheel. As he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand, and as if it were planned, he stayed on with me, and it was grand just to stand with his hand.
Johnny, that was swell. A delightful demonstration of the loveliness that can come out of the human throat. And now, here's Bud and Lou back with the final word. Well, Ken, we've just got time to say good night, folks. Good night, and buy bonds, everybody. Bye, bonds. Plenty of them. Plenty of bonds. Good night to everybody.